All right, Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Um, those of you in Chicago, I hope you are enjoying this weather. This weather is phenomenal. This is tropical weather as far as we're concerned. So a lot of other people look at it and it's, you know, barely above freezing, but that's tropical for us. <laughs> so people are outside walking, you know, a few more degrees and it's going to be short shorts weather here in Chicago. So I hope we're enjoying it. Because remember, this time last year, it was colder than Antarctica in Chicago. So we're praising God for this beautiful weather. I am, for one, am not complaining. All right, remember that I come on uh, every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's my regular time now. And then I come on the second Thursday of each month at 7, 7 o'clock p.m. with my series on No More Genies. Uh, I release this broadcast also in a podcast. So you can find me on Apple iTunes, Spotify, podcast, so you can download the podcast and listen to it. Uh, it's uploaded to a video to YouTube, so all kinds of channels and ways to get the word out. When you come on the broadcast, please like and share, because whenever God is releasing a prophetic word, it needs to go to as many people as possible, so it, it can bless and, bless and set free as many people as possible. All right? So let's say a word of prayer, and we will dive right in. Oh, also, uh, as you know, my music, uh, I told you my music is, I'm putting my music back, I'll put my music back front and center because I don't just prophesy and I don't just teach, I'm also a musician. And so you can look me up, uh, Prophet David Taylor on Shades of the Cross or hashtag PDTSOTC, that's my Twitter, that's also what you'll find on YouTube, but also on my Facebook page, you will find links to all of the new music that I put out. I just released uh, a track, a gospel workout track, uh, because a single mom asked me one time, she said she wanted to work out and she wanted her child in the room, but she didn't want any secular music. So I made a track that was, you know, Christian based and got that up-tempo beat and you can work out to it, but you don't have to worry about profanity or anything like that. Okay, I just released that. So that link is on this page as well, okay? All right, so let's say a word of prayer, and we will jump into today's prophetic word. Thank you, Father, for this day. Lord, I ask you to cleanse me by the blood of Christ, O oh God, and then I ask you to be in my mouth. Fill me with the Holy Ghost, O oh God. Let me speak only what you want spoken. Breathe through me right now, O oh God, so that your word can go forth, that you might be glorified in all things, and that your saints, your children, might be edified and stand more boldly for the right, and that we might tear down the kingdom of darkness that we might build up your kingdom, the heavenly kingdom, the kingdom of light and eternity, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Thank you for an opportunity to know you, talk to you, be around you, and serve you. We thank you for it in all humility. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, amen and amen. Today's prophetic word is double. Yes, I'm a registered voter. Today, somebody asked me that on Periscope. Today's prophetic word is double, okay? Now, you've heard the phrase that God will give you double for your trouble, but where does that come from in the Bible? Where does it come from in the Bible? I'm going to show you today, and then we're going to hopefully allow the Holy Spirit to show us some things we haven't seen before. Let's look at Job chapter 42, verse 10. Now, just to give you a little background on Job, there's only one point to the book of Job, okay? It's amazing to me uh, because I've been listening to people over the years of my life. It's amazing to me what people think the point of the book of Job is. A lot of people think that the point of the book of Job is suffering. How much suffering can you take and still, you know, maintain your integrity or whatever, some people think that the point of the book of Job is a conversation that God has with Satan at the beginning of the book, and that's part of it. But there's actually only one point to the book of Job. There's 42 chapters and one point, and here it is. The entire point of the book of Job is that you can't stand against the devil in your own name. So God took the man that was the most moral, ethical man alive at the time, and God showed you that Satan still is going to have something bad to say about you. 
even if God himself is bragging on you, and the devil's still going to come at you. No matter how good your morals, no matter how good your ethics, no matter how strong your character integrity, which you're supposed to have, is not going to stop the devil from coming at you. And a lot of people are shocked and surprised and angered and get mad at God and get mad at life. And a whole lot of people just sit down because they say, I'm a good person or what I, have I done? I haven't done anything wrong. I've been doing everything I know how to do. The book of Job is there to dispel you of all those notions. Because it does not matter how well you live. You're supposed to live as well as you can. But the book of Job teaches us that it doesn't matter how well you live. God himself can be bragging on you in the heavenly realm. That's not going to stop the devil from having something bad to say. That's not going to stop the devil from desiring to come at you. And the devil going to come at you and he's going to come at you as hard as he can. Okay? Because it is not your righteousness that saves you. And that's the entire point of the book of Job. It's not your righteousness that saves you. You therefore cannot stand against the devil in your own name. That's the entire point of the book of Job. So if you're not familiar with the story, God was bragging on Job. The devil had a bunch of negative things to say. The devil said, if you take the hedge down from around Job, I'll make him curse you to your face. God did so. The devil came after Job. And the devil took everything from Job but his life. Killed his kids. All his property was gone. All his uh, sheep, his oxen, his cattle, they were all gone. And then Job got struck with sickness. He was actually covered with boils. Have you ever seen a boil? A boil is a nasty thing. Job was actually covered with boils from head to toe. From Satan. Okay? And a whole lot of people have misinterpreted the, all those events and think that the point is suffering. The point is not suffering. The point is that Job was self righteous. Job was religious. He heard of God, but he didn't really know him. He never had a vision of God for himself. So towards the end of the book of, the, of Job, after all that Job had been through, after he had religious friends, after he had his wife turn on him, God himself shows up. And God said that he was darkening counsel and knowledge. In other words, they were all running their mouth and they didn't know what they were talking about. So the Lord took Job on a nature tour to demonstrate to Job that God is the judge. God is the creator, and he's the only righteous one. It doesn't matter how strong you think your morals and your ethics are. It is not your righteousness that saves you. It's God's name, not your name. It's God's righteousness, not your righteousness. That's the entire point of the book. So once Job understood that, and Job let go of trying to defend himself based on his own righteousness, and accepted that only God was righteous. And Job had to hide behind God's righteousness. That's when all of that sickness and all that pain and all that loss of property turned around. And that's the verse we're studying today. Okay, that's just a crash course on the book of Job. There's a lot more to it than what I'm seeing. I'm just trying to give you an overall, very simplified synopsis so you understand what we're reading today. Job 42 and 10 says, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his prosperity and doubled his former possessions. That's the Berean Study Bible. New International Version says, After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Okay? Um, New American Standard Bible, The Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord increased all that Job had twofold. Uh, King James Bible. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So what is it that the Spirit of God wants us to get out of this? Let's look at some of those words in the Greek. Okay? After Job had prayed for his friends, uh, excuse me, the Hebrew, this is Old Testament. The Lord restore that word restore there means to turn back in to retreat again so in other words the lord brought his prosperity back before job went through his trial he was the richest man in the east at the time he had like seven thousand sheep and head of cattle and by the time god through restoring them he had fourteen thousand god gave him twice as much as he had before so the lord turned back uh, the lord retreated or brought again his prosperity 
And God is saying, if he did it for Job, he'll do it for you. You might be going through a tough time where you feel like your finances have dipped or your family's under attack, or you might be going through what Job was going through where it looks like it's just the devil everywhere. I have been there, okay? And But the Bible says that the Lord restored his prosperity. That means he brought back the good times, the riches, the thickness, and the fullness. Okay? Now, that word prosperity means a former state of prosperity, but it also means exile or prisoners. Because if you broke, <laughs> you can't do any or you can't do much when you're broke. Okay? It's easy to become a prisoner to poverty when you don't have no money. It also means exile. Exile means to be exile, exile cast out away from the center of things, like, you know, everybody's here and you're cast out somewhere. And that's what Job was when he was broke and sick. Because that's what happens to most people if you get broken or sick. Most people, they're going to see you a couple times and they're going to be like, hey, I got my own problems. Hey, I got things to do. And then the Bible says that the Lord doubled his former possessions. God did not just give Job back what he had. He gave Job back twice as well, that's four, twice as much as he had before. Twice as much. So what does that have to do with what the Spirit of God is saying today? The Spirit of God is saying is that this is what he's ready to do for you and us and all that listen and are trying to HBO, hear, believe, and obey. He's ready to give you twice as much as you had before. Now, the first thing you've got to do is you have to imagine that in your mind, okay? If your reaction to that is to say, well, that's impossible, or I had a lot of stuff, or whatever, whatever, you're making God too small, and you're cutting off the flow of your faith, and you're cutting off the possibility of the extent of your blessing. If God says he can give you twice as much as you, as you had before, he can give you twice as much as you had before. It also can mean not necessarily twice as many friends, but friends that are twice as good. <laughs> That's right. If you've lost somebody in your life and you're still lamenting, your heart, excuse me, is still broken over somebody that's gone, God can give you a friend or a new spouse that's twice as good as the one you had before. Did you know that? But the most important thing to do when you hear this scripture is the first thing to do is imagine it in your mind. Have you ever owned property? Have you ever owned some keepsakes? Have you ever owned some clothes, a favorite pair of anything? What is it that you've owned that's now gone that you wish you had? What if you could not only have that back, but have twice as much? What if you had a closet full of clothes? Like, I've been through a house fire. I had everything I had burned up in a house fire. What if you had a closet full of clothes and for some reason you lost them or somebody stole them? I want you to imagine your closet full of clothes and then I want you to double that closet full of clothes. That's what God is saying he's ready to do for you. He does not just want to give you that closet full of clothes back. He wants to give you twice as much. So the first thing you got to do when you receive a word like that from the Lord is you have to picture it in your mind. That's what your imagination is for. Okay? If you lost a husband, if you lost a wife, God is not going to give you two wives <laughs> And God is not going to give you two husbands. God's going to give you a wife or a husband that's twice as good as the one you had before. But you've got to picture it in your mind. You've got to imagine God restoring you twofold on whatever you're talking about. I mean, like your book collection. I mean, like a shoe collection. I mean, even little mundane things that you might think that the Lord doesn't care about. That's not true. He does care. He does care down to small details. And if he's telling you that that thing that you loved and you lost because the devil stole it from you, or maybe some type of accident or tragedy befell you and now it's gone, God does not just want to give it back to you. He wants to give you two of them or something that's twice as valuable or twice as good. So the first thing you got to do is you got to picture that in your head, okay? The second thing you have to do is you have to activate your faith by letting it come out of your mouth. You have to say it. You have to walk around saying, God's going to give me double. 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 And when you start confessing it, it begins to charge your spirit. 
That's why people that are saying negative things all the time are such negative Nancys. Because they keep charging their spirit with that negative confession. Okay? And the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So if you charge your spirit with all the negative confessions, and negative stuff is going to come to you. But you have to start saying that God's going to give me twice as much. God going, God's going to give me double. Okay? And then you have to take another step which is going to make you look crazy. Don't worry. Sometimes you got to look crazy to walk in your faith. You know what you have to do? So first thing, imagine it. Second thing, confess it. You know what the third step is? The third step is you have to point at the area that you want doubled. Walk outside to your house and say, I want a house twice as big as the one I have now. Walk up to your closet and point to it and say, I want twice as many clothes as I have now. Point down to your shoes and say, I want twice as many shoes as I have now. Okay? If you're if you missed uh, missing a spouse and say, I want a spouse that's twice as good as the one I had before, point to it. Okay, so imagine it, confess it, but then you got to point to that thing, that very thing. And the fourth thing is, and I got this from Marilyn Hickey, and I love it. Marilyn Hickey has this phrase where she says, it's not over till you win. <laughs> I stopped by to tell you that uh, you need your blessings here in your hand. As long as they're theoretical, as long as they're just in your imagination, as long as they're just in your spirit, that's good. But that's not really where we need them. We need them out here. Okay? See, so when the Lord releases a word like this, he expects you to add your faith to it. And I'm telling you how to do that. You imagine it very specifically. You begin to say it so you can charge your spirit. But then you got to point to what you're talking about. And then you have to do the fourth one. Marilyn Hickey says it's not over until you win. So in other words, you have to keep at it until you physically get that thing in your hand. And I've discovered that that's what makes a lot of people give up. And that's what makes a lot of people not get their full blessing. Because sometimes we expect it to manifest overnight. Some things do manifest overnight. I've seen some things. Manifest overnight. Uh, it, that happens in the Bible when Jesus cursed the fig tree. Within 24 hours, that fig tree dried up. Okay, so some things do manifest within 24 hours. But in case it doesn't, it doesn't mean that God didn't speak to you. And it doesn't mean your faith isn't working. It means you have to keep pushing. And you keep have to keep pressing. And you have to keep believing. So think of it more like labor pains. When God gives us a word... That's planting the seed. That's like when a man releases the seed inside of a woman. And then you get pregnant. That's when you have added your faith to it. Okay? And then when you get bold enough to point at what you want to happen, that's like your belly growing. Because the baby's showing now. Because you can't hide it. But to get the baby from inside the womb, inside the uterus of the mom, out here, the mom has to go into labor. Okay, and that cervix has to dilate a minimum of 10 centimeters, and that womb, that uterus is parting, and it's great pain. Okay, and the mom has to go through all that so she can push the baby out. So I want you to think of this process that I'm teaching you like that. When God first releases the word, that's like the seed being released. And then we imagine it, and we start confessing it. That's us receiving the seed and becoming pregnant with the idea. And then the baby starts to show when you become bold enough to start pointing. But principle number four, you need it in your hand. It's not over till we win. So for those of you that are single that don't want to be single, you've got to keep saying it till your spouse shows up. For those of you that are expecting a financial breakthrough, you've got to keep saying it till your money shows up. Because releasing it in the spirit is good. Imagining it in your mind is good. Having your faith is good. But you need that money out here. <laughs> Okay? Uh, and so you've got to keep, again, think about it like labor pain. You've got to keep pushing and pushing even when it gets painful. Because sometimes you're going to get tired. Sometimes you're going to get discouraged. You know, I've seen enough births on TV to hear women say, I don't think I can do this. I want to leave. I'm out of here. Forget it. Which is kind of ridiculous. But I mean, you know, they're going through a lot. Their bodies are supercharged. You know, they're, they're, they're going through a lot. Childbirth. But I've heard women say, you know, I don't think I can do this. I'm out of here. You know, a whole bunch of stuff. But the women endure until the baby comes out. And then like the Bible says, 
once the baby is born, you forget all the hardship, you forget all the pain, you forget all the labor for joy that a child is born into the world. That's in the scripture. That's the same thing that happens with your faith. You've got to keep pushing. You've got to keep remaining in labor until you get it in your hand. And once you get it out of here, you're going to forget all of the stuff you went through to get it out here. You see what I mean? That's the difference between people. Some people give up too soon. But like Marilyn Hickey said, it's not over until we win. Okay? So God has released this word and the spirit. And then we have looked at our scriptural foundation because I'll always give you a scripture foundation for what the Holy Spirit is saying in the spirit because the spirit and the word agree. Uh, as, you, as you've heard me teach before, if you follow me at all, a lot of people fool around with something called extra biblical revelation, which means they think they get a vision from God and the Lord says something to them that doesn't line up with the word. That's the devil. Remember that the devil has known God longer than we have. And the Bible says that the devil can transform himself into an angel of light. Because remember when Satan shows up, he's always hiding behind something. So if some angelic being or some bright light or you have some type of spooky spiritual experience and whatever it is that's talking to you tells you something that's against the word of God, that is not Jesus. That's the devil or a demon. And that's how a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people have been led astray and started bad doctrines and walked away from the truth and messed themselves up. Because the Spirit and the Word agree. Again, that's, that's in the Scripture for you to know that. The Spirit and the Word agree. So if the Holy Spirit of God is releasing a Word, there will be a scriptural anchor. There will be a scriptural analog. There will be a scriptural foundation for what the Holy Ghost is saying. Okay, very important that you get that. So God has released the Word and the Spirit of double. We've looked at the biblical foundation the scriptural analog job 42 and 10 but what we got to do now is we got to go through that labor pain we got to imagine it we got to say it we principle number three we got to point to it and principle number four is not over until we win we got to keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing until you get it out here because you need money out here money answers all things Money needs to exist out here in the physical realm. Just like no woman would want to be pregnant forever. What if you got to be pregnant forever? What if once you got pregnant, you're just going to be pregnant until you die? That's not how pregnancy works. <laughs> That's not how kids work. you pregnant for, you know, eight to nine months, then it's time to deliver the baby. Well, the same thing is true for the promises of God. Okay? The same thing is true for the promises of God. When the Lord release, releases that word and it's that seed and you mix it with faith and the baby grows inside of you, you got to push and you got to labor in the spirit and you got to labor in the natural, meaning you have to add some works to your faith. Uh, and then you have to push until that thing comes out and you have it out here. Okay? All right. Amen. God bless you. I'm super excited about that word. That encourages me because I needed to hear that today. Okay, if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen, and I will pray for your prayer requests. When you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Spirit, are there any more words of revelation, financially, general prophetic words, healing, or deliverance? Anybody need demons cast out? Okay, so here we go. Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me that somebody is having a problem with the left ventricle of your heart. In the name of Jesus, I release the healing power of God on your heart. And I command your heart to be every whit whole. And the left ventricle is every whit whole and works perfectly. Okay, and no, you don't need a pacemaker because God has healed and restored your heart. And it's true right now in the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your heart and say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my heart is restored. My left ventricle is 100% whole with no more delay. Amen and amen. That was for somebody. Okay, I think, that, I think that's it. So amen and amen. 
So, yeah, so walk in that this week. Don't let the devil or anybody take it from you because you are pushing in labor until you get that baby out here. And once you get that baby out here, you're going to be so excited and so overjoyed until you're going to forget all the struggle you had in getting the baby out here, okay? And remember that the word that the Lord has released is double. It's not just what you had before. It's twice what you had before. Twice the property. Twice the quality of friends. Twice the character of reputation. What if you had good character and good reputation? You did something stupid and messed it up. God wants to give you twice the reputation, twice the character. People are going to trust you twice as much as they did before. That's why I said the first thing you have to do is imagine it. You cannot limit God because God is able. God is able to shut the mouths of your enemies. God is able to make your enemies come bless you and help you out. God is able to turn enemies into friends. God is able because I've seen him do it for me. He's able. So I want you to walk in that this week. Walk in your double this week. Okay? Walk in your double this week so that you are imagining it, imagining it, you are saying it, charging your spirit with faith, you are pointing at it, and you don't give up until you get it in your hand. All right? Amen, amen. Uh, this is actually the last Sunday in February, so when I see you next week, it'll be the first Sunday in March. March is coming in on the Sunday, so March 1st. Wow! These first two months have gone by. Remember that my prophetic devotional is available now. Links are always below this video on Facebook. And uh, it's also on my website, uh, www.prophetdavidtaylor.org. And um, my devotional is out and also my music is out. So I'm releasing uh, New Music Friday. So I do a quick video on New Music Friday to let you know what music is dropping. I have uh, the name of my group is Shades of the Cross. I have rap music. I have instrumental music. I have contemporary gospel. I have contemporary Christian uh, I just dropped a track, which is a gospel workout track, because a single mom told me she wanted to work out with her kid in the room, but she didn't want to listen to secular music. So I make tracks where you can talk about, where we're talking about Jesus or talk about something biblical, where you can work out with the kids in the room, and you don't have to worry about profanity, and you don't have to worry about anything worldly in the song. Okay, I just dropped that this Friday, and I've got some more coming. I've got hymns. I've got all kinds of music. So that's New Music Friday. So you can look on my Facebook page and you'll see me hashtag, hashtag it with New Music Friday. You can look it up online, hashtag PDTSOTC. That stands for Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross on my YouTube channel. And you can check out, because again, I have a variety of songs. Hymns, rap, workout music, contemporary Christian, contemporary gospel, instrumental, uh, worship, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so thank you so much for those of you that are tuning in. Thank you so much for liking and sharing this video. I, excuse me, I'm, I'm going to put all the links like in the comments below because the link section kind of got really, you know, big when I was putting it underneath the title. So when I, when I get through editing and uploading and doing everything I do, you'll find the links in the comment section below so you can get my devotional. You can check out the music. You can watch this on Periscope. You can watch this on YouTube. And then also, if you want to support and bless my ministry, uh, my Zell is there, prophetdavidtaylor.gmail.com. Shades of the Cross, that's right, Sally. Uh, my Zell is there, Prophet David Taylor. Uh, and Shades of the Cross is my YouTube channel. That's the name of my band. So you can support me there, too. I also have a Patreon because I'm doing big things with Shades of the Cross, but big things take big money. You know, I'm making more uh, professional videos and not just the lyric videos. And then... Uh, we're going to do some live recording, and there's a lot. Uh, uh, Paul, hey, how you doing? God bless. So there's a lot, actually, I'm doing with Shades of the Cross, so I definitely need your help there. But you get all kinds of cool things. On my Patreon, you get sneak peeks at music before it's released to the public, so you get to see stuff early. You get tracks that are only released on Patreon, so it's stuff exclusive to Patreon. You get behind-the-scenes videos that I won't put anywhere else. So there's a lot of goodies you get. Uh, you get sheet music, too, by the way, that you don't have to pay for because, you know, you're a regular contributor. That's what Patreon is. So support me on Patreon, and then you get access to all those goodies based on the level you support me at. I'll, I'll follow you on Twitter. I'll shout you out, you know, so because I just really appreciate, you know, when people help you and bless you, I, I just really appreciate it from my heart. 
because, you know, people taking their time, taking their money, taking their energy to bless you because uh, I'm trying to be used of God and I want everything that God gave me to go forward the way he wants it, to his, his honor and his glory. And see, what you want to do is you want to create things that are going to outlive you. I am sad to say that quite a few people that I know personally live and die with all of their potential inside of them. The richest place on earth is not the bank, and the richest place on earth is not Fort Knox. The richest place on earth is not the internet. The richest place on earth is the cemetery. Hey, kingdom blessings to you, seek the Messiah. It's the cemetery. All the riches and treasures that God puts in you when he's forming you in the womb inside of your mom. Some people live and die. And they never make their contribution to life. They take all that treasure and all them riches and it goes in the ground with them. And that's the biggest shame of humanity. I do not want to be that way. I want to spend my days releasing what God has put in me because what you want to do is release something that's going to outlive you. Videos, books, songs, plays, poetry. Those things will still be speaking after you're dead. And that means that God can use the anointing and God can use the gifting and God can use what he put in you and in those, those mediums, those contents, even after you no longer walk the earth. So that's why I do all the things that I do. I do poetry. I do plays. I do music. I, do, uh, I produce music as well as write music. Uh, I do the prophetic broadcast. Uh, I write books. I'm an author. That's why I do all those things, because I want to create as much as I can. It's going to outlive me so that when I'm gone, God can still use it to bless a whole new generation of people. Don't we listen, still listen to Johann Sebastian Bach's music? Bach died in 1750. Isn't his music still blessing us? Do you see what I mean? So I say that to say to you that I want to encourage those of you that are listening to me, make your contribution. Whatever it is, large or small, don't go to the grave. And you never said what you had to say. You never told your story. You might be into, into a photography. You might be into charcoals, watercolors. I just worked with an artist that did watercolors. Whatever your medium is, whatever your vehicle is, say what it is God has given you to say. Make something that's going to outlive you, that's not only going to bless people now, it's going to bless people 100 years, 200 years, 500 years after you're dead. Do not contribute to the riches of the cemetery. So that's why I appreciate it so much when people uh, help me. When you help me financially, I'm taking that money and I'm doing everything I just told you that I'm doing. I'm trying to produce all the things that God has given me, given me to produce. So if you want to support me financially, either through my Zelle or my Patreon, Shades of the Cross, I greatly appreciate it. I really appreciate it. And I'm actually doing what I'm telling you I'm doing with it. I'm actually producing uh, the content, okay? Thank you so much. God bless you. Remember that the word this week is double. So we went through that. So watch this video from the beginning so you can get all the information. And I will see you same time next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's time for us to walk in double blessing. The double restoration, restoration blessing of God is upon us right now. God bless you, Sikta Messiah Chief. God bless you. God bless all of you. Thanks to all of you that are watching me live. Thanks to all of you that are watching the replay. Okay, evangelist. Okay, I'll pray for, all right. I'm praying for evangelist Piaz, uh, her sister's husband, her brother-in-law. He's drinking al alcohol in the name of Jesus. I break the spirit of alcohol. You have no authority of us. The demons must bow to us in the name of Jesus. There's nothing you can do, spirit of alcohol, but flee. So in Jesus' name, I release the anointing of God found in the name of Jesus. And I break the spirit of alcohol off of her brother-in-law. And that spirit is going to lift off of you. You're going to wake up one day and not want to drink. And you're not going to understand what happened. It's the name of Jesus. It's the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the true and the living God. And I speak the breaking of that alcohol spirit, and the Lord will give you light. The Lord will open your eyes and show you who he is. And he has a better plan for you than you giving your life to alcohol. 
I declare it and decree it on the authority in the name of Jesus, and it is so. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Now, evangelists, what you have to do is you have to say it. Say it every day. Don't listen to the devil. Don't listen to the demons. Don't even listen to your brother-in-law. Say what the Lord said. Keep saying what the Lord said, okay? Because demons are no match for us in his name. But we got to stand on his name. And we have to stand on his word because demons like to make a lot of noise. If you've ever seen a demon cast out of somebody, they tend to be really loud. Okay? And also sometimes they tend to shake people and they almost always throw them on the ground. I, I have almost never seen anybody get real deliverance that wasn't thrown on the ground at some point. You can't let demons intimidate you. You can't let all that noise and all those theatrics and all that, you can't let that intimidate you. They are subject to us in the name of Jesus. The Lord has already beaten them. But we have to take his name and take his word and stand and cast those demons out and make them move. Okay, so evangelist, Piao, stand on the word of God. Believe that your brother-in-law is delivered and the Lord is going to open his eyes and show him the better plan for his life. All right? All right. Again, I thank you so much. God bless you. I thank you so much. I'll be here same time next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Time. 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Watch this video from the beginning so you can get all the information. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. And I'll see you soon. It's time for double. Walk in double. Amen. And God bless.